Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Join Apostle Oromo Sagi as he shares timeless wisdom on building personal altars. Discover the principles of prayer and devotion as Apostle. Arom delves into the significance of personal prayer altars. Through his own life experiences, he illuminates the transformative power of a dedicated prayer life. Learn how to cultivate intimacy with the divine and deepen your spiritual connection. Build your personal altar today and embark on a journey of spiritual growth and renewal. With Apostle Arom Osai's guidance, you can create a sacred space where your soul can flourish. Amen. Transacting with him using a valve, your fidelity is required. You don't go back on that. And I'm not saying that there is no possibility of you missing one of those your prayer watches. There is a great possibility that you'll miss your prayer watch if you are still learning. But what you will not do is that you will not abandon your commitment altogether. Some of you miss prayer watches, you miss it for two days, and then after three days, say, ah, okay, I know do. There's no need for you to have started. It means that the human attendant that wants to attend to that altar is not yet convinced that the way of the altar is the way to go. He's not yet convinced. So he's still a child. Let us buy football for him, buy basketball for him. But if you want to become someone that is ready to do business with God, when you take a position, when you make up your mind, you don't go back on your word. Because God wants to be able to depend upon you to stand and keep your prayer watches so that he can begin to do some things on the basis of your commitment. I need to show you a few things. Maybe not today. To do the arithmetic. Now that we know the value a possible value that you might have. Are you there? There are some calculations we can do. Especially when we bring that scripture in compromise with some New Testament scriptures, we can arrive at a calculation that will give you a little insight into the kind of thing you produce when you are, you are faithful to keep your watches, your commitment. The man that must man a vow, a, an altar, must have a vow before God. For as long as I live, this is how it's going to be. If you see how consistent the wizards and the warlocks that maintain altars are, you will know that it is not personal human determination that is behind their commitment. They have transacted with their soul. It's a commitment that binds their soul to Satan. And the average believer is not serious enough to bind his own soul to God. To be available daily to provide commitments that will give God the legitimacy for him to intervene in human affairs. Let me give you an idea. I need to give you an idea quickly. The moment you decide to make up your mind to deal with God, what you have done is that you have applied. You have sent in an application for God to come and encounter you. Are you there? Come with me. After Jesus raised, was raised from the dead, the book of Acts of the Apostle reveals that 
he was seen for 40 days on the earth before he was eventually raptured into the heavens from Mount Olivet. You need proof for that? Okay. Give me Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise, have I made of Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, after his suffering, by many infallible proofs, being, being seen of them 40 days. So, when he rose from the dead, he was accessible to his disciples for 40 days. And the Bible says that the purpose of the 40 day presence and encounter was so that he could update them about the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. Are you there? From the time Jesus rose from the dead, he did not have a physical accommodation that people could visit him. There was no physical accommodation in view anymore. All these encounters he had with his disciples, he had these encounters with them based on appointment. Based on what? Don't forget that. And I know you don't believe, so I need to show you one example of an appointment that Jesus kept with them. Then I will now show you, after I show you one, I will show you that there are six others. Are you with me? Matthew. Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. Jesus met them. He encountered them by appointment. Matthew 28, verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had what? Appointed them. Are you still here? So the moment Jesus rose from the dead, the way he encounters people is by what? You, were, you are saying it as if you don't believe. It's by what? Appointment. Appointment. So the day you wake up and you say, okay, God, from this day henceforth, I'm going to be doing business with you. In fact, the day you say that, heaven will not believe you. Until you begin to commit yourself to the agenda. When you begin to commit yourself to the agenda, and you come to a point where heaven now believes that you are serious, they will now begin to book a date for your own appointment. Because from the time that Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus from that time henceforth, he meets people by appointment. Now let me give you an idea. I know some of you are in the public space and you seem to know what an appointment is. I know you know what an appointment is. Uh, for those of you in uh, the uh, public space, you have attended many appointed meetings, and you know what and what makes an appointment. First of all, there is a venue of appointment. There is what? You are not, you are. There is a time for appointment, and then there's what? There's a date. So there are three, three parameters, three things that must be on an appointment notice. There is a venue notice, there is a date notice, and there is what? A time notice. Come with me to Luke chapter 24, beginning from verse 45. Luke 24, verse 45. Every altar must have a human attendant, and the human attendant must be an avowed attendant, someone that has set up the ball of his commitment through a vow. You there? The commitment is a vow. I must, I must bring this one. 
When you begin to operate that way, God will begin to take you seriously. But if your commitment is freestyle, there is a zone for freestyle people. If your commitment is a vow, something that you are determined to deliver, it puts you in another category. The average, average believer in the Nigerian church is a freestyle person. He's not willing to do business with an immortal. He's not willing to do business with a spirit being. Not willing. He's not willing. So when you are awake and aware to the consequences of doing business with God, you come with a vow. The moment you begin to furnish your vow in with action, then the application for your appointment will be processed. In Luke chapter 24, verse 45, the Bible says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He's referring to the disciples. Most of the prophecies that the nation of Israel has concerning the actualization of a prophetic destiny is tied to the manifestation of the Messiah. Unfortunately, he came to his own and his own received him not. They could not discern him. So a mighty move of God was lost. An opportunity for a nation to align with God back to back, that opportunity was lost completely. And God, through grace, now afforded all nations, any man that believed on him, to him gave he power to become. Ah, it was the opportunity that Israel missed that was now offered to us as Gentiles. Thank God you and me we were wise enough to take the chance. Are you there? It was after Jesus had died and resurrected from the dead that Jesus conducted a surgery upon the hearts of his disciples. It was after that surgery was conducted that their eyes were opened to understand the scriptures. Doesn't that look like someone under his spell? Do you know how this spell came? This spell for which Jesus conducted his surgery on their heart, it came through Moses that took a veil to cover his face. After encountering God on the mountaintop, and he came to speak to the children of Israel, they began to complain about the fact that his face was glowing, and he took a veil and covered his face. The prophetic implication of that action that Moses carried out was at the heart of Israel, will be darkened, and, and they will not be able to identify Christ. Jesus had to do something deliberate to deliver his own disciples from the impact of, of that covering cast. The Bible says he opened their understanding, and then the scriptures came alive to them. So the, the, subs, the subsequent scriptures that we're going to read now was re written to people whose, whose minds, whose hearts were open. Not for everybody. For only people whose hearts are open. Verse 46. And Jesus said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved the Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning from Jerusalem. If I was there, I would have raised my hand. If there's anyone here that has ever been in the military before, you know that before you fight a war, you, you must have a strategy session. The strategy session is when the strategy is unfolded, the general that operates on the strategic level comes up with the strategy for the warfare that will be displayed on the theater. In that strategy session, you have the opportunity to ask all the questions that bother you. This is a strategy session. Me, I would have. You know why? I would have asked Jesus, why is it that 
you are talking about a revival. Why must we begin from Jerusalem? Oh, has it, occurred, it has not occurred to you that it is impossible for you to make converts out of Jews. Jews believe that they are the first people upon the face of the earth that had a vital connection with Jehovah God. You don't make converts from Jews. Jews make converts from other religions and they become proselytes. So why put us into the theological struggle? Do we have enough vocabulary to con convince a Jew that, ah, why must it begin from Jerusalem? One of the things that authenticates the Bible was that the first disciples of Jesus were Jews. Mm. I need to tell you of the current sociological wonder that is staring us in the face. Imagine a people are displaced from their homeland for 1,800 years. Uh, Pastor Joseph, how many children do you have? You have two children. Your oldest child is how old? Seven. Does he speak your language? He doesn't speak your Yudama. Please sit down. Now, this is how many years? This is, do you understand that? Oh, okay. Your first child is how old? <laughs> Meanwhile, Pastor Joseph married an Idoma woman. Is it true? Okay, 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 sorry. Let's start from. Um, we need a. Doshima, your son, does he speak to you? He doesn't. Not fluently, but he can, he's trying. Okay, you even tried. Uh, Pastor Ken, that your beloved daughter that you sent me her uh, picture, does she, can she understand the Igbo, Igbo language? Those guys were displaced from their home country for 1,800 years. When they came back to their land, their language was intact. It's a sociological wonder. Uh, where is Chief Donatus? Where are the sociologists? It's... Can you understand? Can you explain that? It's a wonder. It's a wonder. Those are the people you want to convert. And Jesus said we should, <laughs> we should begin from Jerusalem. Why will we be? We will make more converts in Samaria. Leave these people. But Jesus did not only declare the revival, he also dictated how the river of the influence of the revival should flow. And there were two times that he did that. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, are you there? From Jerusalem to what? Judea to where? To Samaria to where? Jesus dictated the flow of the river of... Don't go to Samaria if we have not conquered Judea. So the first question we need to ask is, what does Jesus know that we do not know? That Jesus is asking us to begin from Jerusalem. You know what he knows? It's about power. You know, one of the first things he told them in the, in the book of Acts is that you cannot do kingdom business without power. There is no one human being that will not respond to power. So he said, beginning from Jerusalem. Go back, go back, go back to Luke. Go back to Luke chapter 24. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Yes? And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, are you there? I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Does it occur to you that verse 49 is a notice of an appointment? The other time we spoke about our appointments, people from the corporate world gave us the three things that make an appointment, the venue of the appointment, the date of the appointment, 
and what the, the time. Oh, yeah, I like you. Can we go back to the kind of appointment Jesus gave? In the appointment Jesus gave, it's only venue that he revealed. He didn't reveal the date, and he did not reveal the time. So how do you meet up with this appointment? Tarry ye. Oh, you're not, you're not full. You know the reason why I said all of these things? When you set up the altar, eh? then the next thing is, there is no time for the app Your appointment has been processed. <laughs> it has been processed, but, but you will not be notified of it. The only way you can collide with, with the appointment time and date is what? Tarry. Please help me tell your neighbor, inconsistency lies the power. Now, my friend is in the hall. He will continue from here. So as I round up, wait, wait, wait. Keep. This week, we have serious business. We have serious matters to attend to this week. Let me tell you my own personal testimony before I step down. Because the idea of this week is what you need to set up a personal altar. If all of us have a functional personal altar, the counseling line that I that appears before my table, we reduce. we reduce. Somebody sent me a message. And all my sisters, their marriages are not working. They have gone back to, their, uh, to, to our father's house. Let, I want to come and say, what are you coming to see me for? So what will I, so I should now, hey, you know why everybody wants to see me? Nobody wants to tarry. And I'm not saying this to stop you from seeing me. I'm not saying this to stop. I'm just saying that. Let us add Tari into this matter. <laughs> Everybody has left. They've gone back to our father's house. The reason why it happened like that is because nobody is Tari. All of you people are sitting down hoping that something good will happen. Meanwhile, there are all tasks that are regulating the lives of these people. Wants to tarry. They want to make the pastor a superman. So when he comes, he can press button and say, Galaboko, Galakoko, Gaya, kaka, 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 kaka. That is what they want to make a pastor. That's why, that's why most pastors are fake. They have gone to join themselves with Satan because, mm, tell your neighbor, tarry. So when I went for youth service, I made up my mind before I departed for, you, for Kano. that I will pray the way I've never prayed before, I will fast the way I've never fasted, and I will give the way I've never given. That was my resolve. In order to help me keep my vow, when I got to camp, they stole my meal ticket. So the possibility of going back of my promise did not exist because the options were not many. May your meal ticket be. They stole my meal ticket the first night upon my arrival at the camp. So my fasting started almost immediately. Those were the days where we only had batch A and batch B. Batch A will come to camp in January, and batch B will come to camp in July. So we came to camp in January. The temperature of Kano that year was 11 degrees in the night. Now, do you know what it, look, it feels like? You want to begin a prayer adventure, and then the temperature now drops to 11 degrees. The meaning of 11 degrees is that it's very convenient for sleeping. If you don't have something that is more than a New Year resolution, the circumstances will make you not to be able to fulfill your vow. So I began to push in prayer. I began to push in fasting. I began to push. Those were the days when camp was 30 days. And after 30 days, we were released. I got to the place where my accommodation was, and I continued in my prayer and fasting. 
the place was conducive, I found a, 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 a hill that is where I used to climb for my prayer. So when I come back from work, sometimes I come back from work by five, I climb the mountain. I come back the, from the mountain by 11, sometimes 12 midnight, some other times. And I maintained it on a daily basis. So I was praying for January, prayed February, prayed March, prayed April, prayed May, prayed June. In June, God now told me, it was very clear. He, he said, I can see you are praying. So I got angry. I said, I've been praying since January. What, you are, what, what is the meaning of that? thing you came to. You know why? I was not trained. You, the reason why God spoke to me and told me those words that we may consider not to be important is because he had already scheduled the day of the appointment. And the way I was going, Satan was beginning to weary my heart because God seemed not to be responding. So in order not to allow Satan succeed with his mind bending. God said, I see you are praying. The meaning is, you have not reached the day of the appointment. Continue doing what you are doing. When the day of the appointment reaches, you will have your encounter. That was a prayer I did that I counted how many days I fasted. So it took 264 days before God encountered me. I will not be here today preaching to you if I didn't have that encounter. 264th day, I finished from my prayer on the mountain, came back into the room, because the prayer started becoming so intense that when I come from work with my tie, if I'm late, I, 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 don't, I don't drop it, I take the tie to the mountain. So I came back from the mountain with my tie on, entered into the room to remove my tie. It was 12 midnight. Right? That was when I ran into four angels in my room. The suspended time, this thing you call time, was suspended. I was going into the past and into the future. They were taking me into the past and into the future. Into the past and into the future. They left me by 3 a.m. in the morning. What I'm telling you is on the 20th of October, 20, 2001, 20th of October, 2001, 21st of October, 2001, I came again, dropped my things, began to pray in tongues in the room, this time now, I, to go to the mountain, I have not gone, I, I came to the room, changed, to go to the mountain, then they stopped me. I was in that room until 3 a.m. in the morning, from 6 p.m. in the evening. It was in that second encounter that I knew that the place of my primary assignment was the city of Makot. Are you there? That's how divine direction came to me. When you start, you start with a vow. If you continue, you will hit an encounter of your appointment. The day you hit the encounter of the appointment, the second point I want to raise starts. It is the supervising spirit of your altar that comes to visit you. It doesn't come as a friend. It doesn't come as, as, as an acquaintance. It comes as a king. It comes to prescribe. It comes to give you direction. It opens your eyes to see that you are off track. Are you there? So the human attendant must commence his assignment of priesthood with a solemn vow. 
this flame that I've kindled now, it will never go out. Go and study the temple. You will see a flame there that they, they commanded the priest that this flame should not go out. Priesthood is a lifetime thing. It's not hit and run. If you are not ready to begin, no problem. Go become a nominal Christian. But the day you get ready, just know that this fire that I'm kindling now, I will kindle it for life. If you are not ready for that challenge, don't worry. It's not for everybody. 264 days before God came. Sorry, it's not God that came. It's angels that came. When I started encountering angels, I was so happy because my power ministry now started at that point. I preached for five years with power before it occurred to me that it was not angels I was praying to encounter. It was Jehovah I was praying to encounter. So I repented, are you there? And came back. You will encounter many things when you begin to do your, if prosperity can even fall upon you suddenly. And because of that prosperity, you'll be going to Port Harcourt bringing goods, going to Port Harcourt bringing goods, going to Lagos, you put goods in 1911. you do that for 11 years. Then you'll remember, ah, ah, it was not goods that I was looking for when I started. My own was the angels began to minister to me, and I started power ministry. That's where that sensitivity to know if an angel is in the room. It's that time that I got it. When demons are walking, I will know. I will know. I will know. I will know it. I will know. The gift of discernment of spirit. Among all the prophetic gifts, the strongest of my life is discernment. I do business with invisible beings. If I, I know the song to sing for them to come. I know. I know the song. If here, I can sing that song. If I sing it and continue singing, it, it may not make sense to you. They will come here. No man taught me this. I learned it by the author. There are lessons that you will learn by encounter. Please welcome my friend. Let him. He will minister to us. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.